gonna grab a big bowl to mix the pancake mix in. First thing you wanna do is you wanna grab your pancake mix. This is the one that I buy at Costco, not sponsored. If you're at all familiar with pancake mix, you know that it's super fluffy like flour, so it gets everywhere. So to minimize any damage, I recommend grabbing a cup, putting it in the bowl, and then pouring it into there so if anything falls out, it falls into the bowl and you can use it rather than falling on your counter and then you have to clean it up instead of using it and then it's wasted pancake mix. So see, some of it's kind of falling out. The bowl has saved the day, the pot rather. All right, so that's about a cup. I'm gonna make about this much, a cup and a half, because it's really thick. This should be good for about maybe two weeks worth of pancakes. You wanna make sure to eat them every day so that they don't go bad, but I don't recommend keeping your pancakes for anything longer than two weeks, if not a week and a half, the longest. Just smell them. If they smell funny, don't eat them. That's the number one rule for anything, really. I just like having it be all even. Next thing we're gonna mix into it. Personally, milk doesn't sit well with me, so what I do is I buy almond milk. The reason why I don't actually measure the milk is because I go by texture. So like, pour some. Let's say that's good enough, and then we're gonna mix it and see what the consistency is. So basically, I'm gonna keep pouring milk until it's the consistency that I want, and then I'll be able to show you what that consistency is so that you guys know what you're looking for too when you're mixing this. What the back of the pancake box suggests makes the pancakes still be very like chunky, like kind of like a little bit of the mix we have now where when you pour it in, it's like bloop, and I don't like that. I like my pancake to be nice and smooth and runny. So as you can see, pretty much mixed all the milk in. It's still very much solid. So I'm gonna keep pouring in until it's a lot more liquidy. Mm, let's see, still pretty chunky. See, it's not very runny. All right, let's pour in a little bit more. That might be just what we need. The next thing we want to do after pouring in the milk is we want to put in, yes, baby food. So there's actually a few reasons why I use baby food. The first one is because, well, you don't have to buy squash, cut it, chop it, make it into essentially what baby food already is, and a squash is already expensive. It's time consuming for you to do that, and then, you know, it achieves the same effect. I know it's like, Ugh, it's baby food, yuck, but like really, it's baby food is just whatever it says it is. You wouldn't give anything bad to your baby. It really gives it flavor. And the second reason why I use it is because of the coloring. It actually gives the pancakes this really nice brown, orange, like really pretty color when it ends up at the end being fried. And even now you can start seeing the color change a little bit to something a lot more like yummy, like honey color. The very last ingredient, vanilla extract. And this one has bourbon in it, yum. For those of you guys that are over 21, not that I'm sure a little bit of this would affect you anyway since you're cooking it and the alcohol is gonna be burned off. But don't get any ideas, kids. So the reason why I use vanilla extract is because just a little bit gives it this really great flavor. If you guys have used vanilla extract at all, like in cakes or stuff like that, and this is a pancake, so we wanna make it taste delicious. And look, consistency is pretty good, actually. Now we put the pan on the stove. We put the heat to medium heat because remember, we're using non-stick pans. So if you've ever put it on high, you're gonna burn your pan and all the non-stick stuff on your pan is gonna come off and you don't wanna eat that. So remember, medium heat. Some corn oil just to cover the very top of the pan. And like I've said before in my videos, because this is a non-stick pan, it does recede to the sides and kind of avoids it. That's the whole point of the non-stick pan. 
But once we cook the pancakes, you know, I keep moving it just to make sure that the pancakes have some oil on it so they actually fry a little bit. Once the pan is hot, we're gonna start pouring in our first pancakes. And guys, bear with me. I am filming with one hand and pouring pancakes with the other. And I usually use both my hands when I pour the pancakes. Here we are with all of them in the pan now. I make them pretty small, about the size of my fist, or if you don't know what the size of my fist is, I make them about one tablespoonful. Right now, we're just gonna wait for them to be done on this side. So what we're looking for now is those golden brown edges. That lets you know that they're pretty much good to go and ready to be flipped over. As you can see, those are ready, those are kind of ready, and you wanna wait a little bit for the others, maybe. Just make sure to flip them as soon as you see that and don't let them there for too long, otherwise they may burn. All right, they all came out pretty much perfect. See what I was talking about? That beautiful orangey golden brown. Yep, that was all the baby squash. Otherwise, they'd be a blander, creamier kind of color. But yeah, this is exactly what you're looking for. Those edges are going to be very crispy when you eat them. And you can definitely save up for the week. This is a really great meal to do for meal prep. And just make sure when you're flipping the pancakes, that you try to use either a wooden utensil or a rubber utensil. Just make sure if it's rubber that it's heat resistant. Try not to use metal, but if you do use metal, try not to scratch the pan because the metal can scratch non-stick pans and you don't want to eat that because it's not very good for you at all. Now we're going to wait for them to cook on this side, so I'd say because we can't tell at this point, because we won't be able to see when the other side really turns golden brown, unless the pancake's really elevated, kind of like this one where you can kind of see under it, I'd recommend waiting for about two to three minutes. That should be good enough. And when you see pancakes like these, don't worry, they're not undercooked. Something like this is like where you want to be in the least. Like this is still pretty good because the edges have that nice brown color. That one was super brown because it was in the middle and had no oil whatsoever, but. Now we're going to wait for the other side. So once you're done frying all of your pancakes, you can put them away in a container, serve yourself. For me personally, I serve myself up to three pancakes for breakfast but my serving is equivalent to say one of IHOP's giant fluffy pancakes. If you're a really big pancake eater, then I just recommend either making more or serving yourself more and it just lasts you less days. But that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.